If you've been with us for the past few lessons, you'll know that we are exploring different ways to approximate the definite integral of a function. In our example, we want to find the area under the sine curve from x equals 0 to x equals 6. This is shown in red. So far, we have seen that using trapezoidal shaped panels gives us a fairly good estimate of the area. In the last lesson, we derived the trapezoid rule with end correction. That increased our accuracy from second order to fourth order. Now we're about to see what that looks like with actual numbers. The results of the past couple lessons are summarized here for reference. If you missed those, feel free to go back and watch them before we proceed. That will give a lot of context necessary to understand the rest of this lesson. Since our function is sine x, the derivative is cosine x. We may not always be so fortunate to easily differentiate the integrand, but for our example, this will serve as a good basis of comparison. We evaluate the derivative at the left and right endpoints, 0 and 6, as seen here. The number in the last line will be used repeatedly in subsequent calculations, so don't forget where it comes from. This is the data table from our first lesson on the trapezoid rule. It shows the approximate area for three different mesh sizes. The error is the difference between our approximation and the exact value. In practice, we don't often know the exact value and cannot make such a comparison. In that sense, the example is a bit contrived but it works well to illustrate important concepts. Since I've already calculated the area, shown in the red box, I just need to subtract off the end correction. That calculation is shown below, and the final answer is boxed in green. Now I repeat the same process for a different mesh size. Notice I am using the same value for end correction that we calculated a few slides back. Same thing for the last mesh size. Pause the video as necessary to follow along at a comfortable pace. That data I have compiled into this table. Although the calculations are not shown, I have added a fourth row and included a new mesh size. 0 0.125 is half of 0 0.25. The error is again the difference between our trapezoid rule, this time with end correction, and the exact value which we have the rare luxury of knowing in this case. For reference, I have included data for the uncorrected trapezoid rule up top. We found these numbers in the first lesson on this topic. The table at bottom is the same data we just saw on the last screen. Notice the color-coded divisions. This is showing that reducing the mesh size by a factor of 2 tends to reduce the error by a factor of 16. Since 16 equals 2 to the 4th power, we can infer that this method is of 4th order, h to the 4th. That is in fact what our derivation showed us it should be. As mentioned earlier, we may not always be able to evaluate a derivative exactly, so we might have to use finite difference approximations instead. These were also covered in previous lessons, so you're welcome to check those out if you'd like more information on them. Here is shown a first order and second order approximation for both forward difference and backward difference. That was the general case. For six panels, these are the specific numbers to plug into the subscripts. When evaluating 12 or 24 panels, it will be necessary to change the subscripts on the backward difference expression accordingly. In case you forgot, we are going to plug in the data from these tables. We saw these also in lesson one. Notice that I have used f and y interchangeably, so don't be confused by that. The calculations are too tedious for me to show here. However, I have summarized the results so you can check your work against mine. The top table is using first order finite difference, and the bottom table is second order. Notice that as we increase the number of panels, our approximation to the exact derivative gets closer and closer. I pulled the last column from the previous slide and reposted it in the third column of this table. Each entry in the fourth column is the product of the value to its left and h squared over 12. That comes from our end correction term seen in the formula at the very beginning of this lesson. 
Lastly, I take the area from our uncorrected trapezoid rule, third column, and subtract the end correction, fourth column. That gives us a new approximation for area, fifth column. In the bottom table of this page, I have tabulated the data from the previous slide and computed the associated error. Using a first order finite difference expression for the derivative in my end correction term appears to drop the overall method from fourth order down to third. I've included uncorrected trapezoid rule data in the top table so you can compare. Notice it outperforms corrected area for larger mesh sizes. If we use a second order finite difference expression for the derivative in the end correction term, our overall method appears to increase above fourth order, about 4.6. That seems strange. Could it be possible? I'm not entirely sure. Just remember that this is an approximation, and we could have gotten lucky this time. We would need more information before any definitive statements can be made. I'm going to leave it there for now. I hope you have seen how useful the trapezoid rule can be. I also encourage you to choose your own function and implement the trapezoid rule to estimate the area. These methods cannot be learned merely by watching someone else do them. You must play around with them yourself. See what works and what doesn't. Let us know of your discoveries in the comment section below. I greatly appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in another lesson.